Hi, you're not from the U.S. You just opened an LLC and you're wondering, do I have to pay income taxes? Do I have to pay sales taxes? What kind of taxes do I have to pay? You've been on the internet, you've been Google searching, you've been watching videos on YouTube and you're like, this maybe makes sense, but it's not really talking to me. I think you've noticed that most of the videos and most of the content that you find on the internet is not talking to non-residents. It's not talking to foreign non-US individuals who own US companies or are getting paid from US LLCs. Fortunately for you today, that's all I do. That's who I work with. I work with international people. I do cross-border tax and I talk to people from other countries and help them set up their tax-free LLCs. So in this video today, I want to explain exactly why, technically speaking, you as a foreign owner of a US LLC don't have to pay taxes and how to make sure you don't pay taxes. So buckle up. I'm going to talk all about this. I'm really excited to share this with you and I'm not going to get too technical, but I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I got this question so many times from clients and people I'm working with, and I explained it in different languages. I speak Spanish too. Over that time, I actually put together this full memo. I'm not going to share my screen in this video, but I'm going to reference it and be looking down at it a little bit. I want to go through the contents of the memo in order and explain exactly why a foreign owned LLC doesn't have to pay tax or in, when, in what instances it doesn't have to pay income taxes. We start with code section 865. That defines a U.S. resident. A resident is a citizen, a resident alien, or a corporation. Okay, so you're not a citizen, you're not a resident, you don't live here, and you're not a corporation. A non-resident is any person other than a U.S. resident, and that's on subsection G. So we're first establishing that you are a non-resident. An LLC from tax purposes is just is treated as a disregarded entity. So that, that means that an LLC doesn't actually pay taxes. If I have an LLC, James is paying taxes. If you have an LLC in your name, you're the one that pays the tax. The LLC never pays the tax. If two guys own an LLC, then the LLC may be required to withhold taxes, but it doesn't pay any taxes. The tax is ultimately being paid by the individual. So the LLC never pays taxes. So by default, an LLC will be taxed as either a sole proprietorship or like a disregarded entity, or a partnership, which is when it's a multi-member LLC. If you make an election for your LLC to be taxed as a corporation, then it will pay US taxes. But that's a proactive election on form 8832 that you would have to make. So we determined that you're a non-resident and your LLC is a pass-through entity. Now we have to determine what is subject to tax. Well, in code section 864C, the Internal Revenue Service, the IRS, de defines what is effectively connected income. Effectively connected income with a U.S. trade or business is what is subject to tax. And that's what's always referenced on the tax withholding things and all the forms. So what this generally is, is services being performed inside the United States. A, a trade or business in the United States means you are flying in a service business. You're flying to the U.S. You're going to a client site and you're provi providing services in person. So that's a U.S. trader business in that regard. If you have a office and you have a number of actual employees, then yes, you probably have an effectively connected uh, income with a U.S. trader business. And actually, specifically, A64C1 says, in the case of a non-resident alien individual not engaged in a trader business during the in the United States during the year, no income gain or loss shall be treated as effectively connected with the conduct of a U.S. trader business. What is effectively connected income with U.S. trader business? Their A62A3 says that performing services outside the United States are not U.S. source income. It's very confusing, guys. But if you're doing work outside the U.S., it's not U.S. source income. Logically speaking, it's insane for the U.S. to tax everyone in the whole world because if, if effectively... If you were subject to tax on pass-through income for work that you do in your whole in your home country and the LLC is never paying tax, the U.S. government would have the right to tax everyone in the whole world. That's obviously not the case. However, if you have a fixed place of business in the United States or if you have performed services in the United States, you have dependent agents in the United States, which is more or less employees. You can have contractors in the United States, but if they are entering into contracts on behalf of your business, if they are running, managing your business and have rights to conduct business on behalf of the business, then that could be a problem and you could be subject to tax. But generally, we have contractors, we set up specific agreements so that they, they wouldn't be dependent agents, they would be independent agents with my clients. And what we've done is that I act as an independent agent for them. So I'll provide services, I'm in the US, and that doesn't mean they have to pay US income taxes. If you're avoiding all of that, then you are not subject to US income taxes. It's pretty straightforward. It has some some parts where it says if you're doing things outside the US, it's not US income. And then they have other things where it says if you are if you have a fixed place of business, then it is US income. There are certain types of fixed, determinable, annual, or periodic income. They call it FEDAP income. And this is determined always to be US source if it's paid from US sources. This is most commonly dividends 
on payments from the stock of U.S. companies. So if you are a foreign person, if you're um, Fred from Norway has a brokerage account in the U.S., if he's getting dividend income, the brokerage is going to withhold standard 30% rate. But if there's a tax treaty, it'll be a lower treaty percent rate on those dividends. That's just how it has to be. That's how it is in the treaty because it's a U.S. It's a U.S. company. The, the Apart from that, the most common is royalty income. So if you have a YouTube channel and you have a U.S. audience and you're outside the U.S., they YouTube will withhold 26%, I believe, on your portion of income generated from your U.S. audience. It's the same with Amazon for authors. They're withholding royalty income. It's the same for certain applications. But if you use these companies and you report as a foreign person that is a W-A-B-E-N or W-A-B-E-N-E, I just did those videos. If you need to see those, they might be linked here. Then they will withhold taxes. There are definitely ways to get around this. If you're paying, if you're having taxes withheld from your payments uh, on your U.S. source income, which would be, again, your U.S. audience from your YouTube channel, then there are ways to get around it. Definitely schedule a call and we can get you from paying this. There, there's definitely tricks which would be either to make it a multi-member LLC, give them a W-9, draw down most of the company profits by paying out commissions, saying it quickly, we can go over on a call, or making a corporate election and just not leaving much profit in the company. You can have a corporation and not pay taxes because you basically take all the profits from the company as expenses. It Again, there's different considerations, there's different things to review in these situations, but it is possible, and there's always a solution in the U.S. We can always find a way to lower your tax bill to keep you from paying too much taxes. So you, we can see that if you are a guy who's providing a service from outside the U.S., you shouldn't be paying U.S. income taxes. You should be just keeping in compliance with your U.S. stuff you have to do, but you really shouldn't be paying any taxes. If you are an e-commerce guy and you're selling products only to Americans, you don't have to pay income taxes either. It's really really awesome. You guys are in a sweet position. I'm so envious because I am paying taxes. I work with so many Canadians and so many Europeans or people that move to Dubai or move to another country where they don't have to pay income taxes. And they basically live this tax-free life by just setting that up. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely schedule a call. I'd love to discuss that with you because it's very possible to like not actually pay taxes. And if you just want to get more clients and benefit from having a U.S. company, you can do that without paying taxes either and just deal with whatever the rules are in your home country. I didn't talk about sales taxes here. I didn't talk about reporting requirements. Uh, I have another video about mistakes non-residents make with their LLCs. You may have came here from that video, but I'm going to send you back. I'm going to link that video there because if you haven't seen that one yet, that's really important because that's like more practical advice. This is technical. This is conceptual and an explanation about why, with references to the tax code, you don't have to pay taxes on your U.S. LLC profits, especially if you're doing everything remotely. So I hope this was helpful. Click the video here and you can see some mistakes you should avoid if you want to open an LLC. And I'll talk more about sales taxes in the next video because sales taxes are completely different. If you're a US or a foreign company, you still have to pay sales taxes based on where the people live that you're selling to. So if you're selling to into America and you're selling into the States, you have to probably comply with the sales tax laws if you're selling physical products, okay? I'm more videos coming about that, but for now, check out the mistakes people are making so we can avoid those and we can move on to profit together. Okay, thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next one, guys.